presidential debate expert finds a clash of differences in the performances between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris on the debate stage in Philadelphia on Tuesday. Aaron Call, a professor at the University of Michigan who studies presidential debates, said the more seasoned debater Trump delivered an inconsistent performance, while Harris delivered one of her best debates. Call described the Philadelphia debate as much different in tenor, tone, to the disastrous June debate in Atlanta that cost President Joe Biden his place at the top of the Democratic ticket. Harris effectively controlled much of the conversation with such attacks and baited Trump into responses that were at times vents, and at others, reminders of his wild rhetoric and fixation on the past. While Trump was often on defense, but he did drive the core message of his campaign that inflation and immigration are hammering Americans. In Call's assessment Trump missed an opportunity to talk about the policy evolutions of Harris and the chance to brand her a flip-flopper as her policy positions have changed. Trump, while measured early on, grew more annoyed as the night went on. The Democratic vice president opened Tuesday night's debate with a power move, marching across the stage to Trump's lectern to shake his hand. The exchange set the tone for the next 90 minutes. Call described that moment as unexpected. We haven't had a presidential handshake since June 2016, the first Hillary Clinton debate, he said. But Harris may have got under her opponent's skin the most when she went after his performance at his rallies, noting that people often leave early. Growing visibly irritated, Trump insisted that his rallies were larger than hers. In a divided nation, the election will ultimately be decided by a small slice of swing voters in only a handful of states. And in a nod toward that fact, Harris made an explicit appeal to voters across the political spectrum including Republicans. Trump, meanwhile, offered little outreach to voters in the middle, ignoring the calls for unity that framed his summertime convention speech. It was uh, certainly a different debate in tenor, tone, just from the start tonight than we saw in Atlanta just a few months ago. There was so much expectations coming to this as the race had narrowed in the last few days. First debate for Kamala Harris where seasoned uh, uh, Donald Trump has had seven contrasting styles and backgrounds and kind of philosophies in the debate. So it was a real clash of uh, differences between the two. She, given that she had such a tall task and the stakes were so high, I thought she performed very admirably with, uh, against a very formidable opponent and so much scrutiny you know, on this, this race. So she delivered one of her, her best debates. I mean, she did very well against Mike Pence in uh, 2020, but had a lot of inconsistency when she ran for president in 2019. She got bogged down in disputes with Tulsi Gabbard and had a tough time defending some of her record from California. And tonight she was generally on the offense against Donald Trump. Um, touting her experience as vice president, uh, having a clear vision for where she wanted to lead the country, and was just from the opening moments of the debate, um, really uh, going toe to toe, showing that she had the presidential gravitas that's required for such a position, um, and I thought she uh, accorded herself pretty well. But Donald Trump, I'd say, had a, an inconsistent performance, certainly not as well as he did in Atlanta. Um, he, you know, he knocked out uh, the sitting president um, and not having him seek re election. So it was a high bar for him to achieve such success. Throughout the night, you could tell that he missed Joe Biden from the race and he preferred to run against him. It really maybe brought up his name even more than he did his opponent on the stage, Kamala Harris. He had a lot of fertile ground to talk about the policy evolutions of Kamala Harris in the last five years. She had a lot more liberal positions on the environment and immigration and uh, the healthcare and the economy and things like that that have changed and she's moderated and trying to maybe uh, um, brand her as a flip-flopper like uh, George Bush did against John Kerry in the 2004 election. At least making the argument she has no core values and moderate voters wouldn't be comfortable knowing where she may stand if she does win the election. The, there was some discussion there but instead of really focusing on that like a laser, he reverted back to some unfinished business and grievances he had about January 6th. 
and the accepting the results of the, the 2020 election. Uh, those are things I think, especially for those independent voters, they'd uh, prefer to move on and focus on the future as opposed to really getting those things that we spent the past years doing in the legal system and other places. So um, as the debate progressed, he just got a little bit less disciplined and you could tell um, that Kamala Harris achieved her goal of getting under his skin and I think took him off his little, his best debate game tonight. I mean, the handshake at the beginning. We haven't had a presidential handshake since 2016, the first Hillary Clinton debate. And so that was a start to the debate that was very unexpected. And I think showed um, kind of a, a powerful move by Kamala Harris, not just shaking hands, but introducing herself as their names. And, you know, they hadn't met uh, previously maybe or been in the same room. Uh, Trump famously skipped the, the inauguration in 2020 because of the dispute over the election. So, you know, that was very surprising. I thought that uh, Harris really prosecuted the case on foreign policy and talked about both her strength as being sitting vice president, some of the relationships she had with uh, foreign leaders, the travel she's engaged with, but then also being aggressive and saying that uh, Trump is, you know, being using dictators uh, and kind of prefers them, more comfortable with them as opposed to democracy, really uh, harping on that theme very strongly. And then was surprised when for an endorsement, um, Trump, you know, name checked Viktor Orban as someone that we thinks that he's, you know, been effective. And so that kind of fed into that narrative that, that she was making.